Hi, what's up guys, and it's good to be back with you again. I've got a confession to make. Don't worry, it's nothing illegal, nothing crazy. The confession is that, you know, I don't always uh, set up the lineups the right way. I don't always do the research that I should do at the beginning of the season. I know that with 1949, I probably should have spent a lot more time really taking a look at the teams and looking at the transactions and figure out what it is I should do and figuring all this stuff out. Truth is, I didn't do that because I wanted to get to playing, and uh, now that we're a little bit into the season, I've realized that I've made a couple of mistakes. So we'll go ahead and take a look here at the screen, and uh, you can see the uh, source of some of the mistakes here uh, with the uh, 1949 Tigers. The problem that I made, the mistake that I made, is that I trusted what this thing said, right? And instead of uh, looking closely and saying, well, what position did Callaway play? What position did Mullen play? I just sort of went with these guys and said, ah, this looks good enough. We'll make sure that Camp Bell is playing in first base a lot. You know, we'll, I'm sure that the injuries or something like that will make it so that some of these guys have to uh, be uh, taken out. What you really want to do is you want to get deep into this and take a look and see who was actually playing where at what point in time of the season so you kind of know how the team was starting. It does require some research, though. Don Colloway um, was just used as the pinch hitter here. He uh, started the season actually with Chicago, so I'm going to use that in my um, defense. Only had in real life uh, four at-bats, four play appearances for them, and then was really the uh, starting second or first baseman for Detroit um, as the season went on. We'll go down here if we can find where his uh, fielding is. There we are. And you can see he kind of split his time between second and first, which is probably because of uh, what uh, the exigencies were in terms of uh, the uh, game logs, or I'm sorry, in terms of the defensive lineups and the batting orders. We'll take a quick look here at both of them, and I'll show you kind of how I would do this, right? So there's Callaway and his statistics. What we would normally do if we took the time to really do this is we would go here through this page and sort of look and see what kind of uh, trends we're seeing. And we can see that, of course, Callaway started to take over at second base because we know this already. Barry's really no good. And uh, Callaway then played second for quite some time, did have a little bit of time at third, then played some second. Uh, had a little bit of time off here. I'm not so sure if he was being benched or if he was injured. Funny thing is that with newspapers.com, I can actually look this up and figure out what happened. Maybe something happened in this um, uh, in this game. Maybe it didn't. We can take a look at it and see, you know, did Callaway play the whole game? He did. So there's no indication here of any injury. But when we go up here and look, I think I just saw it here. No, I mean, he was hitting 294 at the end of this. So maybe there was something that happened near the end of the game or something like that. I don't know. We can take a quick look and see. And uh, no, Callaway, he walked, you know, right there in the ninth inning. I mean, perhaps he hurt himself while he was trying to score. Perhaps it was something earlier. I don't know. I don't have time to look at that right now. But that's kind of what you would do, right? And then you can see, okay, after about, eh, uh, there was the all-star break. So after about eh, two uh, weeks or so, he comes back, starts playing first base until the end of the season. That gets you a sort of an idea of what the usage of the player is like, right? You really, though, would have to do this sort of thing for every single team um, on every single roster, you know, or every single on every roster, every single roster, every single team in the league, you might think, hey, there's only 16 teams. That can't be too hard. Yeah, right. You're going to find that uh, it takes more time than you think, and it's a little bit more complicated uh, than you would expect. So you can do a similar thing here with the batting lineups. Um, man, they had Barry leading off. No wonder they were such a bad team. Uh, yeah, Callaway I can sort of see, but seriously, man, I put Kell in the leadoff spot or words. One of these guys who can actually get hits and get on base. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we, we all know this already, right? The history of baseball is full of poorly determined lineups, which is the reason why I don't recommend using the lineups that were used in real life. I mean, if you want to be realistic about it, you can, but you will only become frustrated because teams that have good players will end up with nobody on base, and then you're not going to score any runs, right? If you want to actually play to win, if you want to make the game fun, you got to use your own lineups. Anyway, that's what I would do if I had enough time. Now, I'll tell you something else that I've been thinking about doing. I have been thinking about going through the history of some of the great teams in baseball history. We've talked about a little bit on the blog, though I haven't had as many articles about it as I really should have. Um, and uh, looking at this very problem and trying to figure out for the replayers out there, okay, who are the starters? Who are the role players? What roles do they play? And what is the most realistic way to use them? So that if you're playing not just a single season project, because you can use real life lineups for that, but if instead you're playing a, a, a project that is outside a single season, i.e. you're making a greatest teams league or something like that, then you have an idea of how to use them. How were the 1902 Pirates used? Or how were maybe not the 1949 Tigers, but maybe we look at the uh, 49 Dodgers, right? In fact, we can uh, take a look at that right now because uh, why not? We have it right in front of us. And if we check out the 1949 Dodgers, you know, uh, you can take a look here and get a pretty good idea just from the plate appearances alone who your starters were. But uh, the interesting thing when you look at this team 
is uh, we go down to the batting orders and defensive lineups. Probably should look at the defensive lineups first, and this will give you an idea of how often guys were used, right? Uh, so Edwards will start and then doesn't start for, I mean, a whole chunk of games and then starts a little bit here or there. Campanella looks like he had a little bit of time uh, being injured. Um, there was a little bit of uh, platooning at third base as well. It was mostly Cox, but not always. And then we know this already. In left field, there was all sorts of platooning, all sorts of weird stuff going on as they were trying to fit in Hermansky, trying to hit, fit in Marv Rackley, who's my favorite uh, outfielder for the Dodgers. Uh, meanwhile, in center is mostly Snyder, except for this um, Olmo guy, Luis Olmo. I'm not quite sure what the idea was behind that. And then, of course, Carl Ferrillo in right field, right? This is a team that you probably would imagine that you could figure out really easily. And it, for the most part, it is pretty easy to see. There's not a whole bunch of difference. But uh, when you start digging into the batting order and stuff, you can see where the decisions were made. And if you're going to play the team realistically in a non-1949 scenario, you really need to take a look at this stuff and you need to jump into it deeper. Now, there's another season that I've shown you before in the channel, but um, I think a lot of uh, uh, people uh, haven't seen it yet. Um, in which uh, this uh, sort of game becomes a lot of fun. So we'll take a look at this really, really quickly. Um, this is uh, probably the most uh, famous lineup um, in the history of baseball. That is the lineup with the 1927 Yankees, right? Uh, a lot of people know this one by heart, right? Including people these days, believe it or not. But the part you don't know is uh, how uh, Collins and Grabowski were used as catcher, right? Pat Collins and uh, Johnny Grabowski were literally platooned one game at a time the entire season. I, uh, you know, then uh, who is this? Benny Bingo ended up entering, and that's where, you know, we kind of had a little bit of break in the pattern for a little while. But uh, this at the beginning of the season, what was called in Grabowski is absolutely incredible. I'm, I'm not aware of um, a lot of other times in the history of baseball where you've seen this kind of platoon. Didn't matter if the pitcher was right handed or left handed, right? These uh, little hash marks mean he's a left handed pitcher, and eh, they don't care. They just use one or the other most of the time. Pretty interesting stuff, right? And this is the sort of thing that uh, would be nice to uh, do a little bit of research on. Because most people don't know this stuff, right? I mean, I didn't know this until I ran into it the other day. Of course, they're hitting eighth, right? The lineup's easy to uh, memorize, you know. Um, except, uh, of course, uh, it does change a little bit, I was going to say, this season goes, but not really that much. It is mostly Combs, Koenig, Ruth, Gehrig, Musial, Lazari, and then uh, mostly Dugan, unless he was injured, I'm guessing. They had a little bit of time where they had Mike Gazella. And uh, then you had uh, the catcher, whoever it was, hitting eighth, and then your pitcher hitting ninth. So uh, anyway, probably not too much you could write in your book about the uh, 1927 Yankees, other than saying that there's a real interesting thing going on at the catcher position that would be pretty nice to know if you were going to take this team out of their context and play it in a different league. So there you have it, a little bit of uh, what's going on in my mind. Uh, do you have a uh, way that you like to look at baseball lineups? Is there a sort of uh, pattern that you tend to follow? If so, why don't you let me know in the comments? Let everybody else know, and we can all compare notes, and I'll talk with you later. Bye-bye.